Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome back to another episode of AI Learns. Before we get started, I just want to quickly go over what the series is going to be about. So basically, I love AI and machine learning. Really, anything under the AI umbrella. I'm fascinated by the math behind the algorithms and really like finding fun ways to implement AIs to solve problems. I write a blog that goes more into the math behind this stuff, so if you're interested, definitely check that out. AI Learns is going to be a high-level overview of how some of these really cool AIs work and adding them to fun environments to see what they learn. I want to showcase what AI and machine learning can do, and putting them in these types of environments is a great way to do that. Anyway, let's jump on in. You've probably noticed some of these car-looking things going on in the background. I should quickly mention this is loosely based off something I saw a few years back called Boxcar 2D. I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. You might also be wondering how we got here and why some cars have giant wheels while others don't. You're also probably wondering why these cars are trying to drive up a wall. All good questions. For this, we need to start from the beginning. There are two main parts of the cars. The chassis or the body of the car and the wheels. You can think of the chassis as being made up of eight different vertices. Each vertex describes an XY location where the chassis piece extends to. Because we have eight vertices, we can have eight chassis pieces. I'll denote the vertices as V. Because of this, V1 then starts somewhere randomly between V0 and V2, V3 starts randomly between V2 and V4, V5 of course then starts somewhere between V4 and V6, and V7 starts somewhere between V6 and V0. Okay, okay. That all probably sounded really confusing and a bit boring. Let's take a look at some randomly spawned chassis. Hopefully this helps show how the vertices help make up the chassis. Each vertex point can also have a wheel. Let's look at the chromosome of the genetic algorithm to understand how the population of the cars can evolve. I've already mentioned that the cars have eight vertices and from that eight chassis pieces. The genetic algorithm uses a chromosome to represent each car. The chromosome I've chosen to use has an X and a Y location for each vertex, a density to go along with that chassis piece, a wheel radius that can be used in that location, and a wheel density. It's also important to note that a wheel is only present there if both the density and the radius of that wheel are above zero. Also realize that because the X and Y location can be positive or negative, that the chassis can start making some pretty crazy shapes. This also means that there are a total of 40 trainable parameters in this. Alright, you're probably pretty excited to see how these turn into cars. Let's watch. Notice how most of these cars really are just blobs of nothingness that quickly fall over and die. This population got lucky early on and has an individual with wheels on the bottom of the chassis. But this also isn't necessary. Cars can start with no wheels and slowly mutate until a car gets a wheel or two or eight. Because there is currently one superior car, you'll notice that the next generation, because of roulette wheel selection, creates many offspring similar to that car. From here, cars will mainly use mutation to gain drastically different attributes. The crossover isn't uniform, so even though the cars all look very similar, they are all still slightly different. And this helps with exploration versus exploitation. Basically fancy talk for do I keep doing what I'm doing or should I try something else? So what exactly is this course they're on? Well, it's random. All of this stuff can be easily modified in settings.py. So if you're interested in tinkering with this type of stuff, the link for the code is gonna be in the description below. Let's explore this track a bit so you can see how it changes over time. The cars go until they either hit this green line or until they haven't made progress in some amount of time. If they pass the green line, they win, and if they don't make progress, they're killed off and their fitness is calculated. It might seem cruel, but that's okay. They're just AI. You can see this is their world, the environment from which they learn. It's pretty small, but they're quite happy here. What's that? You want to see how other populations evolved over time? Okay, let's take a look. Here you can see the cars at an early stage of their life, young and naive to the many generations they will have to attempt this course. Let's skip ahead and see what they learn. Yeah, this is a pretty normal looking car. <laughs> What's this? The cars have decided to basically become some weird velociraptor looking hybrid. 
The cars have now learned to walk upright. They decided to forsake their hunched over ancestors and take to running. We've all seen March of the Penguins, but have you seen March of the Velociraptor cars? I've been using the wrong car my whole life and I never knew it. Let's skip ahead a bit and see how they turn out. You can see the cars basically use their Velociraptor tails as a counterweight for when they launch off some of these areas. They've also evolved to have a heavier front to keep pulling them over these hills. That's pretty awesome if you ask me. Okay, let's take a look at another population in one of its later generations. You can see this population has a couple different strategies here. One of them is to be a car that's pretty similar to a drag race car. You can see that it has a pretty long body and some sort of, you know, roll mechanism in the back to prevent it from actually flipping over. You can see that back roll prevention come in pretty good handy here. And you can also see that when it gets stuck and it starts tipping backwards, the fact that it is front heavy helps pull it back forward. I know what you're thinking. This is great, but you want to see some cars try to make a jump. Okay, okay, I hear you. Let's change the course so instead of it being a random course, the cars need to clear some sort of gap. The course starts off flat since the goal of it is for the cars to clear some sort of gap. So what does this gap look like? Here you see a Challenger approaching. Does it have what it takes to clear the gap? Nope. You can see the course ends directly after as well with just enough space to ensure the cars land upright in order to cross the finish line. Let's look at some cars that learn to solve the ramp. You can see the majority of the cars learn they just need one large wheel and to develop their chassis to help prevent them from flipping over. That way they can actually cross the finish line. Some cars have a couple wheels to prevent drag from the chassis with the ground. There is one last type of course I've designed for these cars, the jagged course. It's basically just a bunch of bumps to see how well the cars are able to continue moving forward. Until now, I have also neglected to mention how these cars are evaluated. All genetic algorithms have a fitness function. That fitness function determines how well they perform and ultimately how likely they are to reproduce. You might be wondering if the cars can just become a giant wheel then, and they can. You can see this car is literally a giant wheel. It uses the chassis as a counterweight to keep driving it forward. So why doesn't this happen? Why is the population of cars not always a bunch of giant wheels? Think about it. A giant wheel would be able to solve any course I've showed so far. Basically, because I don't allow it. Does this mean that I have a bunch of if statements preventing growth of cars in a certain way? Nope. That's way too much effort, and that's not really AI-like, is it? AI should be able to learn this stuff on their own. So what prevents the cars from becoming massive wheels or from just growing the chassis large enough that it basically just spawns at the finish line? The fitness function. I created the fitness function in such a way that it rewards individuals for getting further, but also penalizes them on total number of wheels, their overall chassis and wheel volume, along with how long it took them to reach that position. Because of this, the cars end up generally with fewer wheels and a smaller structure. Even though the giant wheel got there faster, it suffered more penalties. Since the individuals want the largest fitness possible, it is very unlikely the car with the giant wheel makes it to the next generation. Here are some cars from the following generation, and none of them actually end up with the large wheel. This is why the fitness function is so important. And if you watch my last video on AI learns to play snake, this is the same genetic algorithm just attached to cars rather than the neural network for a snake. The only thing that really changed is the fitness function. An interesting thing is if you train cars on one course and then place them into a different one, they still do pretty well overall and can adapt to their new environment in only a few generations. One of the really great things about AI is they often come up with solutions that don't immediately come to mind when we think of a problem. For instance, if I were to ask you what type of car would be good at a jagged course or jumping a gap, 
you would probably think of a Jeep or some race car or something you've seen on TV. In this case, the AI doesn't know about any of that and uses what it has in its limited environment to come up with the solution it thinks is best. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this episode. If you liked what you saw, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, that would help a ton. If you want to see more videos related to AI, consider subscribing. I'll see you next episode.